Well, here today at Prime Minister's Questions, Ed Miliband pushed David Cameron to outline what safeguards would be in place if the decision is made to arm Syrian rebels. And the Prime Minister announced he would hold talks on Syria with President Putin in Downing Street this weekend. Well, I'm joined now from Chicago by one of the four experts on the Commission of Inquiry on Syria for the UN Human Rights Council, Karen koenig Abu Zaid. What impact would Britain and America giving arms to Syrian rebels have on the conflict? Well, the Commission has been very clear from the beginning that we're against further militarization and arming either side right now. Uh, we are saying anyone who arms the rebels or the, or the government has to be sure that those arms aren't going to be used to commit human rights abuses and that they would be responsible as much as the ones who are using those arms. We saw two incidents today, horrific incidents, that have been attributed to rebel forces of different kinds. Uh, including a teenage boy killed in front of his family and the killing of about 60 Shia Muslims. I mean, what does that tell you about what we call rebels in Syria? Well, it tells me something about what's going on generally in Syria is that this, the conflict is becoming much worse. Uh, people are using more brutal methods. Uh, people are getting uh, increasing kinds of new arms, additional arms, kinds of things that they can use to fight one another, and that it's an increasingly sectarian, obviously sectarian struggle. And so where is it going? Has President Assad effectively won? Well, no one has won, and we think, don't think anybody can win. Uh, it, both sides think they can win. Neither side we think can win, and it will just go on for a very long time and has nothing but bad consequences on both sides. The trouble is your, your, your commission and others have looked at this whole question of, uh, well, what Barack Obama calls his red line, the use of chemical weapons and, uh, and, and, and other terrible armaments. Unless somebody comes down firmly and says, look, this has happened, it's terrible, we've got to do something, this is just going to carry on maybe for another two years, isn't it? Well, that's what we do. We have no, no idea how many more years it might carry on. We, our, our main objective, of course, is accountability, that people have to be held responsible for what they do and that there are ways to do this, to say that you're going to have some tribunals to look at the people who are responsible, uh, either international or local or some kinds of mechanisms for justice in all of this situation. Tonight, tonight we are seeing this through the, the prism, if you like, of the, the Shia-Sunni rivalry across the region. How do you see Syria in those terms? Well, we used to see Syria as one of the most, if I can say, secular countries, one of the ones most tolerant, one of the ones that protected the minorities in a way, where everyone lived together happily, who didn't know who was Shia or Sunni, who didn't ask, they didn't say. And it's just a shame that it's deteriorated to this kind of condition now. Karen Koning-Abuzay, thank you very much indeed.